Well, here we are. It's on the fifth day of March. It's a cloudy, drizzly, overcast day. And I came up to the woods purposely to show a new food source. But in doing so, I ran across something. And I want to share that with you on this drizzly, cloudy, windy day. As you see this hillside, there's absolutely no sunshine on it at all. So there's no sun glare. And we found something up here and we're going to do an experiment together with us. So let's troop on, uh, move on up here and see what we found. Yeah, and, and to prove a point, sunny days versus overcast cloudy days, we're going to come back and stand right at this point when the sun's out in the next couple days and see the difference in the whole makeup of this timber. How the shadows take effect and how the glare of the sun. So we'll come right between these two trees. There's that tree right there. And as I turn around, there's two hickories right there. So we got two hickories on the right and one leaning hickory on the left. So when we come back and we got that great big uh, oak right there leaning over. So those are your landmarks. So when we come back when the sun shines, we'll take those three trees into consideration. And you'll look at what this looks like with bright sun on it. So let's go on up here and see what we found. Now as you're looking at that leaning limb there against that dead limb against that live tree, I put that up there purposely to find the trail that I left out on because I didn't have my walking stick with the red flagging on the top. So that that's the way I navigated and still do to this day even though they have GPS that would bring you right back to it. So just keep in mind what this timber looks like today. March 5th, 2018. Raining and a cloudy day. Now we're no more than five yards to a shed antler. A fresh shed antler. And I'm going to walk up. Maybe we can zoom it in here. And I can't get it zoomed in because I can't see it right now. But it's, let's see, there's those two trees there. So if I come off, it should be somewhere right, it should be somewhere right in here. So let's walk up there to it. One, two, three, four, five, six yards. And there it is, ladies and gentlemen. Now that's coming in from the northeast direction. Now you can see the big tree that I was standing at. And I'm trying to document these landmarks so you'll know exactly where we're at when the sun comes out. There's a leaf blowing on over, over it. And you can see it's a fresh, small, eight-point right side. I don't know why I always find the right side first. I, that's some kind of phenomena. And it was highly visible if you came this way. But I came from where my camera gear is coming this way. So I was pure lucky to find it. So let's put this netting over the top of it. And this netting is just to keep any squirrel predation from chewing on it. We'll lay it on there right now there now we didn't touch that where we haven't moved it now all we're going to do is come back when the sun's shining and we'll pick that netting straight back off of there and then we'll see the contrast and then you can decide which was the better day of the two well here we are this is thursday we were in here monday on a cloudy cloudy day and it's a whole lot brighter in here today and uh we're gonna go in here and uh just see the contrast of that shed. Now that limb laying right there, propped up, was our signpost. And we're, we're going to go in there and take a look about it. Remember we covered that up with some fencing to keep the squirrels, the four-legged and possibly the two-legged, uh, from walking off with that antler. This we laid the screening material over that. And if you notice something, I can't believe that. That was not chewed like that when we left it. That was only, I put that netting, as you've seen, 
was completely over that shed and it wasn't chewed like that. And here we're back. Uh, we found it on Monday. So it had been Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday. So, <laughs> putting that uh, <laughs> material with those two posts on there didn't have any benefit. But, like I said, this is always a learning channel. <laughs> and what phenomenal is that? I'll show you. I cannot believe that that's Thursday, March 8th. And th we laid, like I said, we laid that material over there to prevent what you're saying. And apparently, possibly, my human scent on the fence and stuff brought the critters to it. <sighs> Unreal. Never, every time you go to the woods, you're going to learn something. So let's move this stuff around because that antler was facing the other way. It was facing straight northeast. Well, I got the same clothing that I had Monday morning at 10.30. And it's a little 3 o'clock, maybe a little after 3, and the sun's right in my face right now. And what I wanted to dramatize was how hard that would be to find an antler on a sunny day. Remember, we're five yards from it. So let me swing the camera. There's an antler laying out there five yards from us. Now on Monday morning at, at 10, 1030, it was not chewed on. So what that predation has happened in three 24 hour periods. So three times, what is that? 72 hours uh, is what, you, what you're witnessing. Now watch when we step this off again. This is the big tree that we were standing by Monday morning with no sunlight at all. Raining, cloudy, and <laughs> no chew marks either. Dang it. Okay, real time, let's step this off. One, two, three, four, five. And there it was. Now if you back up, I don't know, that, that antler, I can't even see that antler because of all the glare on the leaves. And let's walk past it. Remember, we took a shot at it five yards to the southwest. One, two, three, four, five. Now, it was, it grows pretty good there. And Monday, it wasn't bad either. But definitely got a lot of shadowing. Uh, but I cannot believe the predation. Let's pick this little guy up. All this happened. This chewing occurred in a mere 72 hours. And I don't know if the fencing uh, with my human scent on it brought the critters into it or not. But it was whole, and you'll, you see it on uh, the video on Monday. And uh, there's the two little trees that were right to the west of it the shag bark and the white oak and you know they're they're a mere one two steps from it so what i'm trying to tell you man those squirrels can really get after that in a hurry and if that had been a trophy rack and i'd have done that not that they're all not trophy racks well it sure wasn't like that monday morning at 10 30. <sighs> Learn something every time I go out in the field with this camera. And just so fortunate to be able to share it with my viewers. Because you can't reenact this. I mean, that's fresh, fresh, fresh chewed in 72 hours. They really got after it. I don't know what the odds of that would be to leave an antler out and see how long it actually got chewed on. But you just witnessed it, and I even tried to take prevent measures. And like I say earlier, those preventative measures might have been uh, what caused that rapid uh, uh, gnawing on it. It might have been attracted by my scent when I c carried that netting up here. Who knows? But uh, oh well, live and learn. Yeah, as I'm looking off into the sun, I'll show you what you're looking at. This is what the same woods looks like under full sun. 
So I'll let you decide what the better day is to shed an antler hunt, but I can tell you right now, this puts a lot of strain on your eyeballs. And we did have a skiff of snow down here yesterday, and you can see some of that around the tree there. But it's bright, 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 and those hickory leaves and oak leaves reflect it like 10,000, 10 million little mirrors. <laughs>